Kilkenny. <laughs> Seems like there's a lot of paper here. Yeah. yeah. I need a guide, though. Um, and I will look on what, what it looks like for the state side of. We're offering basically some of the same programs we have in the past. Uh, of course, you know this past two years with the drought and then the tornado. <clears throat> over here on this conservation cost share page. Put it back. <clears throat> the blue graph. That's a separate page by itself. There we go. The blue is water resources. We don't have any windmills to pay them out. And of course, the drought, some of the wells went dry. We didn't have to drill. We to drill. So, and the red is a Trees and the wheat barrier installs, so that's the amount of feet that it can lay down a little. Uh, well, it's still what the it's that number? The show results. Well, I know, but I mean, <coughs> just the one of the practices. Just, okay, just like the, the, the number of people. Number of people applied to them. A year ago, we had a real big one that came for quite a bit of that. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. I mean, you see them all over, and I just didn't know yeah. that, uh, what that was. The wheat dirt, people just have to ask for that, right? I mean, it, and then when you apply for your trees and shrubs, I mean, it's, it's part of the deal. It's part of the deal. Yeah. If you're going to cost your <coughs> through the district or um, putting in a wind break, then we won't cost your unless you like the wheat dirt. The survival rate of the trees yeah. is a lot better than the wheat yeah. barrier. Yeah. The wheat barrier will hold the moisture mm -hmm. and given the, the little bare root seedling the better chance to survive. Yeah. <clears throat> Some of them even go on if they are got good milk to put in the river. Oh, that's yeah. I, I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but, but basically, we know money's tight and we're asking for the same. And now we've got a couple of years to get a point of time. No, no um, one of the
and then if you look at 2015, we're looking at a 10 percent reduction in the AA to conservation districts. Um, everything is going to be going down for next year. And then I also gave you a copy of our um, annual report. Mm -hmm.
approved the minutes from uh, so it's been, it's been the same as I approved the minutes of last meeting on favor say aye. Aye. I'll oppose saying sign. Motion carried. Uh, we'll recess. South of the doors and there were that tire sets. Oh, yeah. Well, those, nice roads, sure. those roads offset some and some new K1. If we run back over to that tower, we'll turn it. Century Link is this one the way out of the town? Yeah. Can you tell them? Fiber optic key. Uh, uh, this, this is fiber uh, optic Is it? Of course, they don't cross any county roads either. Lots of township roads. Got to the oil one, didn't you? <laughs> you spend enough money this month? For this? Yeah. He got first. Holy moly. That's not even the bad stuff. 120, 15,000, 14,000. Well, let me see. It's 157,177 gallons times $2. Or $2. Jeez. Jeez. Cents. We just paid. In this bag. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You want to know the exact amount? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's what part of this is for, to get some of that back. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to take one side. <laughs> <laughs> Not do this and then just dodge potholes. Here's the clip. Just clip. Yes. You're going to be nervous. See you. Checks. So we get 90% exchange. They've already taken you out. They, yeah. Is that pretty well cut in stone? They just said, if you take it, we'll give you 90%. 90 I think they're taking it right off the top from what I've seen on the phone. So there's no negotiation? Hmm. But it's still so much better than what it used to be. Oh, yeah. Because you can, at least, you know, you're not having to let, you can do the, you know, this type of stuff instead of letting contract out because if you try to put a contract out for hot mix all the way it's you do miles at a time you know one mile at a time because it takes so much money
make a motion we bring this fund to exchange agreement for the K dollar. Motion has been made and second we accept this agreement with KDOT on better saying aye. 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 All opposed saying sign. We'll sign one of these, Phil, and both of them. No, both sign both of them. No, both both sign both both both. It, the, they'll, they'll keep one because okay. we'll, we have to see. He has got to put her official okie dokie on it. Yeah, official seal. I don't know how official. <laughs> <laughs> Embossed. Is it an ink stamp or an mm. embossed? Embossed went away. You didn't know if somebody ever did sign your name that much, did you? Oh, I signed a lot more than that. <laughs> it's, uh, I've got stamps, actually. No, for work. <laughs> Anything else, Philip? Mm -hmm. That's so all I have. There's something I was going to... Oh. Yeah. People are concerned with the piles of dirt that you leave in the ditches for a no. while. Uh, we're going to address that. Okay. Okay. They're not getting very far off the road. Okay. I, well, I just... No, I, no I've... I mean, I'm, I'm, I've I'm been seeing them, and then like, about two that. weeks later, I sort of leveled off or not there, so... Yeah, well, I didn't know I, the, <clears throat> they're not getting far far off. <laughs> I, I looked at that the other day, and like, this is not good. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's... There's something else I've been asking. I forget what it was. Passport your photo supply it's $180 for 2013 budget. Are um, you going to be under that or? It's under that, I can't remember. <laughs> I mean, you've got 180 budgeted for this, this year. You spent 107 right. basically in 2012. You've only got the 150 yeah, total no, we're, we're good. Um, we had to buy a new camera, and we, so we should uh, be good for, yeah. It, the, the supplies are pretty minimal. The cost of the supplies is the photo paper or ink for the camera thing. Um, once in a while, we have to buy a new screen, but that's real cheap. But the camera basically was the, yeah, that we did for, we did for a while. 
It's not that you're overran with passport requests. You'd be surprised. The fact, um, the next, the note I paper clip to the budget is just. Um, I just ran a report yesterday just for the heck of it, just kind of my curiosity basically. Um, the first one is um, all of my income for 2012 and I've got it sep separated out, highlighted the reporting fees were 24511 mortgage registration tax 37983 and copies and passports and photos, that's all included in that last total is $21,947.07. I just kind of wanted to show that to you that we are pulling in some money for the county for, for uh, I mean that's a pretty good chunk that twenty one thousand dollars. Where does that where does that what where does that money go? It goes to county general. Mm -hmm. How much you charge for copy? Fifty cents a page for a paper copy. Um, see, I've got them separated out too. An index page is a dollar a page. Um, emails are twenty five cents a page. Um, faxes are a dollar a page. I'm pretty um, low on my copy fees compared to a lot of counties. Um, you know, might raise. The only thing I'm thinking about really doing is probably raising the email fee instead of 25 cents a page to one dollar for the first page and 25 cents for anything after. Because if you email somebody one page, 25 cents, I don't even really expect them to pay me for that. You know. A one-time thing, just somebody out of the blue being a copy of the feed or whatever. But the attorneys and abstractors and kind of, you know things like that that consistently were emailing, we definitely charged to them. <coughs> but um, we do have a few little maps we sell once in a while. It's already those last year. And then the second batch is just 2013. The totals for for this year. So. I just thought it was interesting and thought you guys might want to see the. We are doing something in here. We're making a little bit of money. We're making a little bit. Copies of emails. Yeah. Um, and that mortgage registration tax that we're, we're collecting also, 1% of it does go to the Heritage Trust Fund, which is, the, you know, to restore facilities, places, buildings, whatever, that are on the National Historical Registry. And I know uh, Carol Long's deal just got on there. So. That's a pretty big deal. Any questions? No, that comes, those fees that goes to HTF, that comes from uh, deeds and... Mortgage registration tax. When you file a mortgage, it's 26 cents per hundred. Um, the amount of the mortgage, yeah. So that's the only thing? Yeah. Yes, the only thing it comes from. Right. Yeah. The other fees are just regular filing fees for documents. And most of our, I mean, basic fees for documents are $8 for the first page and $2 for each additional page. Because several years ago, when or people $4. Were, were refinancing, you know, to go to lower rate, mm -hmm. that, that funding grew by several million dollars. Yeah, it did. And actually, there's a lot of refinancing going on right now. Really? Yes. Yeah, lots of. Capital outlay is just part of your total budget. It's not a separate. Right. So you, you can't carry, or you don't really carry it over. If you yeah. have $1,500 budgeted, you don't carry that into it. Yeah. You could use that for anything else. If you came in short. Right, Somewhere. right, but it doesn't carry over for year to year it, like that. But yeah, at the end of the year. right. I thought maybe capital outlay might be separate. Because it is at some places. At schools are totally separate budget item. That's how I was taught to do it anyway. Okay. You want this to me or? No. <laughs> so, okay. Any other questions? Surprise. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I don't have to take it. Um, no, I want it. I do have something I was going to bring up, and it was just because I got the phone bill yesterday or the day before. I know, and you know, I turned in the voucher for it. My phone bill, I'm sure, is pretty minimal compared to some departments.
But mine is still like every month it's $183 and some cents, so it differs a little bit. My long distance that I'm actually using is less than $3, what I'm calling long distance. And yes, I do have a fax line. Mm -hmm. I have to have that fax line. But I would suggest that somebody look into combining phone plans, getting a cheaper phone plan, doing There's something. I know it's crazy, but gosh, I think I could save the county a lot of money. Just an idea. I'm not, no, I'm not volunteering for it because... Well, even like a residential, just a single line is, I think, 58, 60 bucks a month just for a single I line. So, I mean, if you go to commercial rate... I know. I, 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 two, I just... You know, you, you, two lines. I don't know if it facts. can be... I don't know if, I don't if know. there's a way we can say my not or not. I get a call every now and then from them, and they want to want me to do something with my plan, but I don't really understand phone plans that well, so I never feel confident in making that decision, you know. And usually it's somebody I can't understand. Really? Somebody from Arkansas? No. <laughs> but it was just a thought, if somebody would want to take that on, and I know I don't want to do it, I don't want to be the one, because I don't know. I just don't understand it how I dropped my landline phone at home. I, all I have paying on is my internet, saving a lot of money. Okay, that's my thoughts for the day. Great. I'm just looking at you. Waiting. Okay, you can write me up again. She told me she was writing me up for all the. The list of things that bring a snake next time. No, okay. do not bring a snake. <laughs> oh, really? No. Okay. That's not a good idea. Okay, Doris. Okay. Well, I'm She's been waiting patiently. Okay, I'm not very patient. I'm not patient. Okay. 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 Okay.
sometimes when they get used. The problem with the <laughs> thing is though for our breastfeeding program is that we can say we've got one here. And you know there's it's the law that somebody can breastfeed the baby in the place they want to. And she gets it on call like yeah. breastfeeding. I used you know, years ago I breastfed my church. Is it, is it part of Obamacare that is requiring that? No. You sure? I think so. I think most of us just promoting breastfeeding is healthy. When, when you brought that up last time, I looked that up, but it is part of Obamacare. Is it law? Yeah, but the law is you can breastfeed wherever you want. So, so what you're saying is they just need a, a space available in case someone wanted to breastfeed their Yes. Or a child. So we had somebody breastfeeding in a five-year-old. That's true. That's true. Yeah, it's a really breastfeeding room or a lactating room. Where you can. Yeah, it could work too. That's what Where Obamacare calls it. Yeah, lactation room, right yeah. In other words, if you have a baby at home, you can go in there and pump it. You can go pump and store your mouth. Yeah. That's why we need an outlet. I could see that almost part of it. It just needs to be an available space for somebody, you know, if somebody's in court or something. For employees and the public. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I like the empty room downstairs. By the sheriff's or the meeting room. That's not private. How do you want to carve that out? Put a lot of stuff. Yeah, I don't know. How are you going to make the other ones private? Side table. I mean, the, that glass is is uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's what if somebody's one. meeting in there and somebody needs to use the yeah. well, Then I have to come up here. Yeah. Or the courtroom right. or somewhere. Depending on just plenty of places that you find if they look. But you, you have just have to. Because I understand is you have to. Have the sign space is okay. Yeah. In case the lactating cop comes by and says, right. where is it? I don't know. If you can find the room. We can find the room. Is there there's electricity in there? There's no heat that heat vent or air conditioning. Does that really cause a problem? It's not the problem. Because it's not the part of the heat. Where's that at? Right. Where they think where they think they, they used to. to. They don't use uh, it for anything. They don't use it for anything. Yeah. It's just storage. Yeah. 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 Could use an highway patrol zone. We can use it quite a bit. That's why it's black paper. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> Sign on the door, probably. It's the okay to use it. Like you can go to and then fix it up instead of chair and there's some other steps that you need. Okay, we're fine. Just a chair, chair. <laughs> What's wrong with the living pressure? Oh, you would you eat in the bathroom? It cannot be a bathroom. Yeah. Would you eat in the bathroom? <laughs> well, from what I've seen of the rooms that aren't really used in the courthouse, the restroom's probably cleaner than that room. Well, if not, my God's honest truth. Yeah, <laughs> when Anna gets done, it's going to be clean. She did our carpet. She did an awesome job. And Austin, you know, she did an awesome job. Because we met in the meeting room downstairs one time, and it was there dirty. There is the, the information that I have. And we have to make a policy, right? Yes, it has to be a county it's policy. The county policy. And the Affordable yeah. Care Act. Yeah, you're right. It's exactly, so. exactly what it's for, which makes me not want to do it. <laughs> so you guys want to talk about that or what? If you can get the room, I don't care. If you, if you make the policy and find the room, I'll and do the cleaning. Yeah, do the cleaning. You. You'll back her up when the sheriff throws a fit, right? Well, we have to do something. Yeah, we have to. He probably knows. Uh, and then someday, I went to a training yesterday at Salina on the paper rules. You know, all the paper rules, right? Well, 
Well, they've all been updated, and <clears throat> of course, all the forms will have to be redone. But someday we need to have a different conversation about county about who's covered and who's not, who needs to be. Or like anybody that sees PHI, personal health information needs to have confidentiality statement. Did you see that? Did you see it? Like you're doing this write off list. Yeah, we just see the names. We don't see the names. Okay. We just see the names. Is there any other PHI you guys see? I mean, from your office, probably that'd be it. Well, I mean, accounts receivables or something. That's the only thing we see from the EMS service team. But Randy needs to sign one. Because he sees stuff on his they didn't, and it might not even be an issue, and it's not my department, but um, if you contract with an outside board, you're supposed to have get that stuff in place, but since the hospital's already get the code, it's not going to be auto, it's not going to be the Yeah, the only thing is, it's the The name. auditors. Do they say the names? Yeah, she took a copy of my aging. After they start and there's a there's a might see the names too. Yeah. Is there an hour workshop or something? Do you have to attend? Or what? Forget the training? Yeah. I have to do workforce training and they didn't tell me what workforce training is. I have to figure out how to train my workforce in the year on HIPAA rules. Because I used to carry a HIPAA card what it was. When I was on the board of the hospital. And we had to sit there and go through a slide. There's some kind of HIPAA training that everybody asked me what you're doing. It seemed like, it seemed like hours, but I think maybe just one hour. It could have been 15 minutes. But we all had to go through it. And then you yeah. had to sign this document. And then in turn, we were, the board was HIPAA certified. Get your training, or, yeah. yeah. So anyway, there's lots and lots of rules. About HIPAA with electronic health records coming in, which we may never do. Maybe even more complicated. I'm going to read my book, the whole thing, see what it has to say for sure if I can. Well, I'll read that and then report back to us this afternoon. This <laughs> afternoon? How about, we'll give day? You a week. We'll How about give another day? day? To do your homework. Yeah. <laughs> And if there's a breach, there's a big deal about breaches. It wouldn't um, hurt anything to be certified even for us. So that you have that seen it, if they start collecting accounts for you, you might, I don't know whether it'll come up or not, but you no. might start seeing names. Well, it would simplify <laughs> what the EMS department would have to supply the yeah, names out. Yeah, they don't need to worry about yeah. it. So I mean, anyway, it make it simpler, but. since the county is what they call a hybrid entity, which is part of us are covered by HIPAA and part of us aren't, we're supposed to carve out the people or the departments that aren't covered. So like the treasurer, mm -hmm. she would be, um, I don't know if you ever see PHI, ever? You don't look at remittance devices that come here by the state? Nope, I don't even Okay. <clears throat> Definitely, the auditors. I already thought about them before yesterday. I mean, I could do it. Yeah. Yeah. Rather be safe than sorry. Exactly. Yeah. I don't mind doing it. Anybody else that was, you know, in the instance of child abuse or whatever, the sheriff's office. I think child abuse is we do get court things faxed to us from SRS, so we see that. So I suppose we should. So I'll get all this together and get ready and update my form and have my privacy practices reprinted. So the school nurse. The immunizations aren't covered by oh, yeah. but you have to be dead fifty years to make sure you have the Seriously. Well, what if the child comes in with ill and they have to be sent? Oh, yeah. To the that's a treatment home. agreement, that's a treatment association. She have a treatment association, so like if she sends this child out to me, say, we make sure it's chicken pops or whatever, we don't need it because that's treatment association. 
we'll go through the same time. Same thing with like physicians and us. We don't need an agreement because it's a treatment system. It's care. But if the physician was setting policies for us and writing the policies, it wouldn't be. It would be a business associate. Well, <laughs> See what I'm saying? And then on the new privacy acts, we don't have to hand them out to existing clients. We just have to hand out the new ones to the new clients. Mm -hmm. But it all, the new ones pertain to all the electronic health care stuff that's coming out. So those have to be encrypted? Yes. Yes, I heard all about that yesterday. Too. Even smartphones. Even the emails I get on my smartphone. Yeah. If I would lose my smartphone and somebody would find it, it could be technically. So yesterday I put the password on it. One lady told about her department that got rid of a computer, a data computer, and the IT guy was supposed to erase the hard drive. Well, he either didn't do it or didn't do it right and went to the dump. Well, the dump guy thought, oh, I need a computer. So he took it home, turned it on. Guess what? And then he started bragging about it. Not only did he get in a little trouble, <laughs> the health department was in trouble. It can happen. And I've given Randy, you know, hard drives and our computers. I sure hope he did that. That's what he's supposed to do. You know, he remotes in from home a lot on ours. And, you know, he sees what he wants to see. Not that he'd remember because I can't remember things for 15 minutes. I can't. Now, uh, back to this lactation thing. Is, is she going to write this policy or do I? No, we'll write it. For the county. It's, it's and she'll come, she'll come in and clean that place and fix it. Well, she's, she's, far as, she's really good at all this stuff. Is he already No. I think he's coming today. You might give him a high sign. Uh, yeah, you guys need some storage room. He's really got plenty of storage room. This, back to this field, that dumping the computer at the dump. Once that's brought on the dump, that becomes the property of the, of the county. It already city. was a county property. It came what? from the health department. Yeah. yeah. It was supposed to be crushed. The guy wasn't supposed to haul it out. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to That don't happen. Maybe uh, include Darren on the health policy. <laughs> <laughs> Our stuff does a lot here. Randy takes it. Great man, the story, whatever. You can talk to him, but I guarantee you don't have to worry about him. He's so paranoid about everything. He would do it right. Someday we'll have to take a talk to the training or something. And this is training you can do for him? I hope so. Figure out how we're supposed to get all the workforce trained. Maybe you guys can just come out and watch it. I recall this was on the CD. Certainly a laptop through a projector. Yeah, I don't know that Ted will ever be out to see us. I hope not. Yeah, I think we out with the lap game. You guys can have fun with that, aren't you? We'll recess.
four, four-ish years, I believe. Um, we have a couple things that will be happening in 2014. Pharmacy Go Live, where they have like a med cart that they take to each room and they scan the medicine, scan the patient badge, type thing. Um, ICD-10, electronic health records. We're still in the process of replacing computers. Uh, Can Ed also went away this year. There's government funding for internet, so that has the we have filed for a different type of funding to use that. Um, we've gotten like half of a response back, so kind of depends on what kind of funding we get, what our telephone expense would be. We are also in the market for a new CT scanner because our lease is up in September. So all of those will affect next year's. So the CT scanner will be another lease? Are you yeah. looking? Uh, it'll yeah. probably be at least. It will be, even the cheapest one is more than what we currently pay. Because they're doing away with, we currently have a one slice, and I don't think they manufacture one slices anymore. Four and eight slices are typically refurbished, which means they've already been used. And so. I don't think they make single four or eight. Because those are even more than the ones we have now. So that lease has the potential to double monthly. That's just kind of an average of what it costs. So the ICD, ICD 10 is a mandated thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Pharmacy is the same way. And the EHR. What's that? The EHR, the electronic health record. <coughs> What do you see for your, your your net profits from from what you've seen from the changes you made? I mean, do you see do you see that kind of help offset if you can't do the full six hundred thousand for some of your mandated changes or things that you have to you know get in check with?
Well, in some of this, the summer is typically slower in the spring. Todd, no, didn't you say that Jason's going to come over and explain that? Yes. Um, the he said that he would. He said that he would come over and go to the office. He doesn't have the final done yet. We were hoping to by the by this board meeting, but he didn't have it done. I, I would rather do that. I mean, McKenzie and I can speak to it a little bit. Obviously, he already came very easily, but um, you know, he said he'd be glad to do that for us, so I'm glad to do that. That's what I would do. Yes. Anything else? Cameron, you have to have something to say. <laughs> <laughs> just Hi. <laughs> How are you guys? Did you bring a guest? I did. This is Austin Gillard. He's an administrative fellow at Pratt for a year. So he's getting his master's in healthcare administration. He wants to have a Todd or Susan Page job. And so he's shadowing me today. And so he does everything I do. And as soon as we get a day worked out where he and I can visit, he'll probably want to have a Susan Page type job. <laughs> <laughs> so he's here to learn how healthcare works Good. from the inside out, both small hospitals, medium hospitals like us. You guys, so. Trying to get him exposed to all the aspects of everything. So. And I told Mackenzie and Todd they could do this without me. <laughs> See, I didn't even have to come. <laughs> guys didn't ask them hard enough questions, apparently. <laughs> well, it says it pretty well. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it's like, I don't like it. It, it, it is what it, it is. is. What it is. And, and doing the best I can. It's still had hope, so. Anything else you guys can think of? What kind of shape your Billy in? Any major deals going on there? What do you need to know about? Um, it's in pretty fair shape. Um, and I didn't used to think so until I just was in other small hospitals, and, and I thought, wow. Um, you know, the, the heating and air conditioning is uh, the oldest part, I think, is the shoulder, and it's six years old. Wonders five, four. Yeah, come back in. Um, I'd be happy to. Next 
work at the same time. <laughs> Construction's next week. Lisa, do you have something? I have a bunch of, you got time or what you got? They've got about 20 minutes. Always have time. That works. <laughs>
and then the third column, what they do in that county. So to me, um, Kearney County, they're a big oil and gas county and they do driver's license, but they don't do IRP. Barber County, same thing. They're a big oil and gas county. They do driver's license, but they don't do IRP. So you can keep going down. Smith County, they do IRP, but they don't have much oil and gas. Okay, and then so my salary is down at the bottom. Um, shows what I make. We're a big oil and gas county. Do IRP and interstate driver's license. So to me, I, I think you can see my county salary warrants these top three that I have listed out here. I believe that's the you know salary that the job supports and the responsibilities that are done. So I wanted to show you this is current. This isn't you know the section. What I gave you before was. I called I called and got this information. So so I wanted to show you that. Now what's interstate? Interstate. Okay. That goes into our next conversation. <laughs> it is commercial vehicles in state. But not okay. travel out of state. Right. Yeah. And like Shane, Like my probably. trucks, yeah. yeah. Right. Like, I've only got two big trucks that can travel out of state. The rest of them have to stay and are only permitted for in, in state use. Of them. And they have it, they're required to have a DOT number. Um, so this is something new that's coming. Okay, with our IRP, we had a $3,500 increase, $3,600 increase in revenue from 11 to the 12 year. So I'm expecting the same increase for the 13 year to 14 year, hopefully. Yeah, I don't know. As with our part time hours this summer, that may have hurt us a little bit. But, you know, IRP is still growing. You're on board with me on that. We've talked about that before. IR, uh, interest rate is something new. Currently, you tag those at the county level. That's changing January 1st. And they, the state, has given the interest state to the eight counties that are doing the IRP. So this is a more additional work now on top of IRP. And so it's Will that be, be an increase in your motor vehicle compensation then or not? Probably, Probably so. so. Yeah. Just like the other counties, right. they'll have uh -huh. an increase too. Right. Yeah. So it's the same ones that did our LP will be interesting. Yeah. They're given it. They, they talked about all the counties would do it, but then they came back and said, no, you know, we're going to give it to the counties that do IRP. Um, you can do it online, and if if people at Topeka do it, the, you have to pick a preferred county. And like, say somebody in Reno County just does it online, but they pick Stafford County as their preferred county. The state will pay us the seven dollar. It's going to cost seven dollars and fifty cents vehicle. Then the state will distribute that money to the preferred county if the state processes it because the state cannot make any money. So there's 75,000 intrastate vehicles in the state of Kansas. Currently about 40% of them are done online. So, so now we got more training coming up. We got a new computer program. IRP is changing, and then now we got to train for interest. So we're supposed to get that installed the end of July, first part of August, to start practicing and training on that to get us up to speed by January first. So 
more changes. Are there counties that get in that if they want to now? No, just the it's, five. It's limited to the eight. But some other county can't do, start doing IRPs. No, that's, that's not what this map is. Let's see. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, oh, yeah. sorry for jumping ahead. <laughs> no, um, but I thought that's what it was. Now, I do have to tell you, they are thinking about putting a person in a driver's license office in Central County. So. And I asked Leo, I said, Leo, would that hurt us? Because we pull a lot of Sedgwick County. That's the advantage of us doing this. We pull a lot of Sedgwick County. Um, but he said no. With, with interesting now, he said, I think you're going to double or triple your income. But he said, you don't know. Right. I mean, it's, it's a crapshoot. So. And then, so I will definitely do the part-time person once we get, we get that up and going because it's going to be, and I'm going to have to change my phone lines too, I think, because I'm going to have to have one person just take an IRP calls and then one person for now. We're tying up the phones and the county people can't get a hold of us because, you know, during those three months, the phone is just, goes and then the county people call and say, your phone's been busy, I can't get a hold of you. So I think I better change to just an IRP phone number in my county. We would put the interest state stuff on the, the, as the IRP. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, I think I'm, I've shown that, you know, we're taking on a lot more in our office, a lot more responsibility. My girls are doing a lot more. And if this works out next year, you know, I'm, I'm going to be looking at things for the girls too, what we need to do for them with their added duties. It's, you know, it's just more, more responsibility. So, But I want to wait to almost like this time next year to get through the season next year and see how it goes, see where we're at, see what it warrants. I'm still on the fence. Sometimes I think it's too much. And, you know, I don't have to do it, you know, but I, I think it brings in good revenue to the county and I think it's a good county, but I don't want to, I don't want to um, shortchange our local people either by any means. As long as it pays for itself, I'm okay with it, but I'm still a little iffy if it really... So this interest state coming in, this new item, it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. So how many locations that do, what counties do IRPs? These that are circled, Haskell County, Greeley County, Lane County, Smith County, Marshall, I don't understand why they put why three in the one, this one district. So, yeah. We're a piece of the deal. That's huge. We really are. We're in the man. Yeah. You can see. That's why I gave you the visual. Right. I mean, this, 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 this one don't make sense at all. Johnson County doesn't? No, because see, they're a big county. And they don't have the manpower to, to take, take that on. They like the, the smaller to medium sized counties. And another reason for that is this smaller county people, they know they know more um, in the bigger counties you have one person this is all they do and this is all they know and here in smaller counties so Nemaha and Marshall County so if you're in Johnson County then you got to run up to the Nebraska border to, to do your IRP or, or Topeka you can always go to Topeka no yeah I didn't that's not a, uh, a county office, that's at the state building, so I didn't that's circle that. Yeah. Well, we'll just put an X there. <laughs> yeah. And then next to Marshall County, I've kind of put a squiggly line. Leo, that works with Topeka, he goes into that county like one day a week. But he moved from Topeka, and they, they let him work out of his home, and I think one or two days a week he goes into that, that office there in the county. But it's not all the time. So like national carriers down Liberal and Dodge? 
Well, those are going to be interstate, not intrastate. But yeah, they still go to. There's a big difference. But I mean, they still have to go to Pico. No, they can go to Haspel County. Oh, they can. For IRP. For IRP. Yeah. And that's so why. all the packing plants and stuff, mm -hmm. they're all interstate. Right. And we're going to start doing inter and intra. And so the flour mill, obviously, do they have some. I think I don't know what they are. Probably just intra. Probably. I don't. I think they have all their stuff hauled out, shipped out. I don't know they do anything that themselves. I don't. I don't know that, but I'm assuming. Um, in our, I should have brought collections, but I've showed you that before. We're second in line of what the revenue we brought in is on Haskell County. Um, yeah. And. But that's one advantage Haskell County has. She's got some big, big places, places yeah. down there, and they come in. But boy, if we could just get one of those big trucking companies to come here, I'd love it. You know, they got 500 trucks. I think there'd be 20 of those in Sedgwick. Yeah, yeah and but looking at stuff, there's a lot of onesies and twosies. Yeah. Is that so I think there's a lot of that all over. Um, it's the third one over from the And then you got to keep in mind too, people to sublet. You know, it keeps growing. People are still catching on at county offices. Yeah. yeah. A lot of them still just go to Nick. Okay. Um, one, one more issue. We talked about Senate Bill 96. I, you guys all three came and um, I called. Uh -huh called you and you stopped in and you were in the office yeah. and I followed it here. Okay, um, I've decided against that two dollar fifty fee for now and it's why and all three of you asked me, is it on the receipt? And it will be. I before I committed I called them and asked them. So for now I've held off. I think we ought to just keep thinking about it. I don't know, but it won't show on the registration, but it'll show on this receipt that we give them. And this is the financial receipt that we give them. So it would be listed out, and they haven't decided what they're going to call it. Senate Bill 96, or... Um, they call it that on the board. County processing fee. Uh, I, don't if they have that, it, I don't want to call that. Yeah. But they haven't decided what they're going to call it. So I held off. I hope that's okay. We can still do it. We can still do it anytime. It may take a little bit more time to get it in the programming, but it's the same. Reno's getting to 50 cents. Mm -hmm. That's what that Reno did, 50? Mm -hmm. I think so. Or still in the yeah. bill passed. It's done. Yeah, yeah it's, it's passed. It's a done deal. Yeah, we can do it at any time. But, you know, we figured it with the $2.50 increase and maybe $20,000 increase in revenue. Yeah, that pay for that part time help. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but it, it will also well, it's no, it's they tell you what what they're gonna call it. Okay. Okay. And then as I hear more from other counties too, what they're you know, maybe we wanted to do something comparable to other counties. Right. Okay. That's all right. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right, thanks guys. Thank you. Do white? Is D white out there? Yeah. They're out there. Dwight, come in. Hello, hello. I sat on that cushion because it has an electric buzzer. So. <laughs> <laughs> Dwight, yeah. Shane Stanley. Hello. Hi, Dwight. Hi, Shane Stanley. We have the, we sent you electronically, we have copies here. Okay. Um, we appreciate uh, the time here with you. Uh, get, get to the bottom line right away. We're asking for a continuation of funding at the same level that we've had for the last year and for a number of years. Uh, we've had a major development at the center that uh, I outline or describe in here for my 43 years there 
We've had intakes by people calling in and asking for an appointment, being given an appointment three days, seven days out, whatever. And we were plagued by 25% of those people not showing up for the appointment. So we had someone sitting there waiting, nobody coming. And uh, so we have moved to something called open access, which is just walk-in service. And uh, we still have some downtime of people waiting for people to walk in. <laughs> you know, you have to have them there ready to see somebody. And of course, they don't walk in on the hour, uh, one at a time. It's all nothing in the morning and everybody in the afternoon and that kind of thing. But we've been able to accommodate that, and uh, of course we have no, that eliminates the no-shows of the clients, at least, because they're coming in when they want to. And uh, they seem to be uh, pleased with that option. Uh, they're seeing someone when they want to be seen, and uh, kind of striking while the iron's hot. And uh, so, and we're seeing some better results in the follow-up of it, and we've arrange the intake to do more intervention treatment planning right then. The old system, you came in and basically did a statement of the problem, signed a therapist, the therapist developed a treatment plan, and then you started on the treatment. And uh, so we're trying to get to the point a lot quicker than before. So that's the, uh, the probably the, the major development we have there. Uh, on the funding side, uh, we are f we're doing okay. Uh, it seems like every time we're just doing okay, then something changes, so we're trying to rebuild. <laughs> and uh, in this particular situation, the governor cut $10 million out of mental health in the 2014 budget, and um, our share of that was about a quarter of a million dollars. Well, then the Connecticut shooting happened. And there was a talk all over the country about, uh, you know, gun control or mental health services. Well, the governor didn't want anything to do with gun control. And so uh, he said, well, we need to invest in mental health, which was a little embarrassing, but it just cut $10 million. And he announced a $10 million mental health initiative. He didn't really mention that that was the $10 million he just cut. Uh, and uh, so we are basically getting back the money he cut, but of course, if it's a new initiative, we have to do new things uh, with it. And uh, one, five million of it is targeting hard to engage clients. Uh, to be honest with you, these are the people who are who the uh, secretary and paid ads, gets calls about, I've arrested this guy eight times, so how come they're not doing anything about him? And uh, so they and they want to use intensive case management where, we, where you give people services whether they want them or not. And we did that back in the mental health reform days uh, to, because we had a grant. And the grant was to keep people out of the hospital. And the way you keep them out of the hospital is just keep after them all the time make sure they're taking their meds and that kind of thing. Well, they cut all that grant, went all to Medicaid. Most of our money comes from Medicaid, a fee for service. And it's more difficult to charge somebody a service that they don't want. Uh, and so basically what they're instructing us to do is to redirect funds from people who want services towards people who don't want services and be successful in doing it. So that'll be a challenge. And then the other five million uh, is even a bigger hurt because uh, that was a little over hundred thousand dollars that was dedicated to children's and family and children's services. That was the first money Western Kansas ever got for children's services. The uh, mental health reform uh, funding was designed to close beds at the state hospital. The other two state hospitals, uh, well, there were two more, had, uh, they closed 60 adult beds, 30 beds a year, and 30 children's beds. So they had a child year as part of mental health reform. Well, out in Western Kansas, we only had 30 beds uh, for children, and uh, they never intended to close those, so they had us close 90 adult beds. 
So it was after that that we got this uh, family-centered system of care money, which we have tracked faithfully, made quarterly reports on statewide, and served 6,000 children and families, and the governor got it. They just eliminated it altogether. And so this new five million is supposed to go to something called the recovery, uh, a regional recovery center. I'll tell you, someone thought that sounded like a good idea. They said it to the governor. The governor announced it in a press release. So now it's got to happen. And uh, uh, in six months, no one's been able to explain to us what a regional recovery center is, what it's supposed to accomplish, uh, how it's supposed to be more efficient, especially out in western Kansas with the distances. Uh, you know, we said we are already a regional system. There, you know, there are five regions out here. Um, but anyway, uh, that region, which is now headed by area mental health center, Garden City, Dodge City area, uh, they, uh, we will, as a region, which is all of western Kansas, all the west, the large state hospital catchment area, will come together, do a needs assessment and develop a plan, and it has to be approved by KDADS uh, by August the 15th, and then we'll get the money that we got before. And um, I can tell you that I'm pretty sure that our region will decide that the need is children and family services. <laughs> so we'll go back to using the money for what we intended, what needed it for in the first place. But uh, those are just some of the hurdles we're jumping, just trying to keep the same level of money uh, uh, that we had before. It is, it's, in some ways it would have been, of course it would have been a challenge to lose a quarter of a million dollars, no question, but if they'd have cut it and next year come back with a new quarter of a million dollars, we'd have been excited about that. Our problem right now is trying not to not serve someone in order to serve this other go this other direction, and they we've asked them over and over again, well, who, who do you not want us to serve anymore? Who do you want us to drop? And they won't touch that question at all. Uh, so we're basically kind of going into a mode of doing a little less for everybody to try to do something for everybody. Uh, uh, so that's about the situation we're in. Uh, didn't know if you had any questions from any of the numbers. Your walk-in service, what, what hours do you run? Uh, it's eight, 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 to, eight to five, but no one comes at eight, uh, so they start scheduling appointments with people at eight, you know, and... Uh, they come after work. Yeah, and um, uh, so it's, and we don't, we track Every day when they come in trying to see some kind of pattern, we really don't have really? developed that yet. So, uh, my daughter's got her PhD in clinical psychology and she worked four nights a week because nobody wants to come in from eight to five. Where, where does she work? Well, she did work in Chicago, she's changed positions now. But, uh, she, I just couldn't believe it. She, she wouldn't go in until five or six because nobody would come in. Sure, sure. Well, she was in private practice, yeah, right? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, that's when you really sure, catch, catch absolutely. the absolutely. And that, and we are open until nine Tuesday night. Uh, we so, were open until nine Tuesday and Thursday night. And when we cut grants, we uh, had to cut back somewhere, and yeah. so consolidated that way. Is that your busiest time then, Tuesday night? Uh, it is busy. It, yeah. it is busy, sure. Mm -hmm. Especially for families. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And after school hours, of course, are mm -hmm. big demand. We have a very large children's program Wendy's in charge of. Uh, we have an entire building dedicated to that uh, group. Uh, we are getting. We are going to try something this year. Uh, we got a phone call. This is one of those. I mean, this is the things you hear about about government. You know, if you don't spend this money, it's going to go away. Well, we got one of those phone calls saying, uh, you know, you admit a lot of people in the hospital. Where it would if you had an apartment for a crisis service, could you put them in there instead of sending them to the hospital? 
we have money that we've got to spend by June uh, 30th. We'll give you $10,000 if you'll develop an apartment in the next two weeks. And so uh, we were, we, uh, we had a woman who was in charge of that kind of thing, was home on, uh, was off on maternity leave, but she found the apartment and uh, asked the lady if she'd be all right with our people. They, that wasn't a problem. And she said, well, can we write a check and pay you a year in advance? She said, I have to ask my husband about that. Nobody's ever asked me to pay you in advance before. So. <laughs> Are your, fee, are your fees to your clients then a lot, like a mental health center, then a lot less than what if you went to private practice? Oh, yeah, it's a sliding fee scale. Um, so it's based on their ability to pay, and we, uh, we ask for proof of income, set a uh, fee based on that. Uh, so it can range from $10 to $120. Not many people pay $120 around here. Um, and... Um, uh, so, because we are required by law to see people regardless of their ability to pay. So we can't turn around and turn down anyone because they can't pay. Our challenge is distinguishing between ability to pay and willingness to pay. Uh, and so... Seems like we heard that. And uh, so we will turn people over to collection agency if they've signed the agreement to pay this and they just don't pay it and uh, we'll, we'll turn to the collection agency. One thing that makes us different from a typical business though is if they pay anything on the bill, we'll carry them forever. You know, so we don't want to put any pressure on them, but they just have to do something. And so we have people paying them five dollars a month for years, but we don't pay off the bill. It is a challenge. And I have to tell you, the governor's initiative won't do anything in the way of stopping shootings like happening today. So. Um, uh, if that truly was the intent, it's just not targeted the right way to do that. As if anybody actually knows how to do that. But, uh, any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you. I saw Joe. I saw Jeff. But they had disappeared. A little recess. <laughs> Safety plan, you have 
you gain another uh, safety plan, which is approved presumably by the Attorney General, although the statute's not clear on that, you will gain another four years in which to figure out what the heck you're going to do. So we got basically six months to figure out what the next six step months, is to six get months four years your safety exemption. plan. And, and, and your safety, safety plan building. can be just remove all those signs off your buildings. Well, we don't know exactly what the safety plan is. I think that see, would be one. See, I, I think the legislature, if she did that, that they allow, it has, it has lots of shareholders and companies that manufacture these kind of screening uh, devices. Uh, safety, some type of safety I've seen screening devices. In fact, there's one in use up in uh, Barton County. That's true. I, don't, I can call Richard Beckman, who's in county, mm -hmm. county administrator, and find out what that costs. But the That's problem is, is with this bill, you're talking yeah. about one of those for every entrance, arguably. Plus the first entrance. Well, right. if you yeah. use the one, yeah. And then if you use the wand, then you have to have persons to do the wand. You know, and I, th I thought they said somewhere around thirty thousand dollars for the one the walkthrough. But then you're still going to have to create. You're going to have to have a person there. Census was at our meeting just to remove the sign thing. Yeah. It? Except the only one you really have to, whatever the judge says, you have to but provide security still, for the court. Yeah, they're still going to have to have the security officer outside the courtroom. Well, if the, if the judge mandates that. Right. And, and he told us he did. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you might, I mean, if you're going to do that, you might as well have one in the front door. <laughs> You'd have to have one oh, there is one board. thing we have got to include the square. That's kind of the problem. There's no signs up there. I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you put iron, run iron, the fire wire, your, your signs on the door aren't going to keep that thing from walking down. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think Reno County, they just sent a letter. Cedric County. Barton County did. Send a letter to the two one. To the request to oh. Oh, okay. uh, Richard, Richard Beckman wasn't at this meeting, but uh, I was in such a reasonable meeting for a couple of things. Um, what are we doing? 19? 19. Well, did you hear about our problems with jail space? I did hear about that. You know, we may have to go as far west as Ford County downstate. You know what? There's got to come a point in time when we draw a line and do something a little more economical. This seems crazy. Well, spend seven to ten thousand a month and housing prisoners plus the travel and the expense of moving them around and back and forth to court. Was the rest of them full or yeah. Um here, here's here's part of the problem. You you have a lot of statutes which have mandatory jail terms. And indeed, back in 1981, when they came up with the idea of mandatory jail time for DUI, that probably rendered two, three quarters of the jails in Kansas obsolete, maybe 85% obsolete. Uh, you have some counties where they get clever. I, I, you know, they facetious or these are word clever, but sometimes it does not work out well. Some counties have overbuilt in the hope of basically mm -hmm. selling their jail space. Uh, a couple counties uh, basically uh, made a profit that way. Yeah, I think County did that. They made a lot of money off of Central County, Wichita. Um, Ottawa County, which is just north of Salina, 
Cape, Cape Bridge Jail, basically with Saline County prisoners. C City of Salina uh, seems to be an optimistic community where what, they've expanded out their jail on really twice. It's become a new jail. Each time they've been 100% occupancy as soon as they you know, put the new wing online. So Saline County is always exporting prisoners. Uh, Rice County was very ambitious. Uh, they built a huge jail, but they did not do a very good job of, of marketing, probably because they're wanting more per prisoner per day than anywhere else I can think of. And Jeff shaking his head yes. Um, pretty much the going rates are around $45. Uh, Rice County talks about $75. Eighty-five dollars. They, they offered me because they like me. They're offering me a bargain, <laughs> so, seventy bucks. Uh, it, it's it's one of those deals where um, they have space in Rice County, but it's expensive space. Now I don't know what Ford County's going to charge. I talked to Rob about that. Ford County has space. I left it to Rob to, to call. Uh, the uh, I have no idea how well the sheriff types get along with it. But uh, uh, the long and short of it is the problem is not going to get any better. Well, uh, yeah, that's that's my point. I mean, if we're going to invest in, the best in all possible worlds, we would have like, Edwards County, which has just, its jail is so old it's still in the courthouse. Right. Pawnee County. Like Pawnee County. Yeah. The best of all possible worlds would be Pawnee County, Edwards County, and Stafford County get together and they build a detention facility kind of somewhere roughly equidistant from the three courthouses on some all weather roads. And you know, you can figure you can, you can figure out you know, what each county should have to contribute going back maybe ten years and seeing what, what the uh, prisoner population has been. In That's the best of all possible worlds. In 93 or 4, we actually looked into that. And the commissioners here, well, none of the commissioners wanted it, except Edwards County, because they were talking about putting it at Belvoir. Which yeah, would have been where? Belvoir. But it would have been about an equal distance for everyone. But it didn't go anywhere. And I think it's something I need to revisit, because I tell you, this is, this is crazy. Spending that kind of money in the mileage of vehicles and personnel time. And it didn't help, you know, before prisoners could get a DOC even for six months to a year. Now they can't. I mean, if it's a year or less, we have to house them, which it didn't just be that. Mm -hmm. The DOC, uh, I, I can quote this almost exactly because this is what happens when you live like this. Prison wardens. Um, the uh, men male capacity for DOC has been like a ninety nine point eight percent now for like a year. In other words, they're having to keep paddling but they stay above water. Women, they got uh, some space available, but you can't use that space for male prison. Um, well, the Kansas legislature, despite cracking down on various you know, types of criminal behavior, has not made any effort or attempt at expanding our prison capacity in Kansas. I, you know, when, when they made possession of more than a pound or a pound or more of marijuana, a level two <coughs> felony. I could fill up a prison all by myself. I mean, that, everybody going down the interstate who gets stopped has got more than a pound. Whoa. Well, I'm going to drive all the way to Colorado and get less than a pound. Yep. I just going to <laughs> but uh, the, the thing is, you know, you, you, you have a choice if you want to fill, fill up your limited prison space with these folks or you're perhaps more dangerous people. But the legislature, they can't exist in their own little world. So, like I say, we're always going to have more and more people to incarcerate at the local level. 
if I can see the legislature do it on certain low level felonies, like you know, felony theft, level nine, and stuff like that, saying basically you'll serve your time in the county jail, period. I, I can, you know, four it's kind of late. I, I can see that training coming down the track. Because yep. it's so much cheaper from their perspective in Topeka to do that than to appropriate funds and build a new prison. It seems like a couple of years ago, at one of the meetings, and the director of the Kansas Department of Corrections there, he's saying that it's like a, they budget $145 a day per bed for the prison system, whether that bed is occupied or not. That the, that the cost right. continues daily at $145 per bed. So what is, how did Greensburg come up with the idea of what they would charge per day? Is their facility, you take what the cost of the facility and... I'm sure that's how they did it. I, had, years. I never asked Kingle how they came up with that, but they're not that much cheaper than Pratt or Red Dam. Right. right. But I, I would suppose that's what they did, the cost of it. Have, right, and he wanted to keep it full, and it's been full. We couldn't even put people in there until this week. Yeah. Ended up so how many full. beds do they have? I don't know that either. I never Is it like a 30 it. facility? No, or it's bigger than that. Larger than that? Yeah, I think it's 60 or 80. And then the personnel to run it is probably what, 100? Yeah, I don't know how many. I mean, I could start doing some checking. I mean, with your, I think the police put get the numbers together and look at it. This is, I mean, yeah, it's not it's getting better. better. Yeah, it's not going to get any better. <laughs> the I'm trying to think what, what what's the newest jail in Kansas? I would say maybe Ottawa County, North of Swan. Probably. In which case, I could drop by there. Shebang. Now, obviously, we're talking about something that's probably 10 years old, but people don't build jails yeah. because they are expensive. Yeah. And, and well, by the time you get done building, then they change. change the stuff. Well, the surveillance and everything else is out there. You know, can I can tell you. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're doing it. Yep. Yeah, it's it's we didn't build it 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Before it was cheap. And then, of course, you get into juveniles, and then that, that rate jumps to $160, $170 a day. Who knows? Could be more than that because that that space is shrinking. Yeah. Uh, you can remember the Saline County Juvenile Detention Facility, which was very old. Uh, basically, shut it down because they couldn't surveil and see what the detainees were doing. I don't know if Saloon County is going to build a new one or not. Because yeah. right now, we, we get a hatch, but if they're full, we've got to go to Joaquin. Is Joaquin even open? I don't know. I don't think they're open. I, th I think they close too. Well, Tre Trigo County got really ambitious when they tried to put in this detention facility. The only problem is, very few sheriffs have the stomach to drive out there. You know, They'd much rather be space in uh, Junction City or Hutchinson or Saline County. And, and the Saline County Sheriff was always very good at letting surrounding county use his facility. Um, but uh, Trigo County, they never got the population that they, they needed. Uh, the people they hired to operate it kept asking for more and more money. Uh, Trigo County was trying to essentially you know, let the facility. He wants to come bid on it. Well, that's where nobody, nobody was legitimate came to bid on it. Well, it's, I know a few years ago, <clears throat> it wasn't too long, but we had to, we arrested someone in a wheelchair. Lyon County is the only place I could find handicapped accessible. So we had to get in for you. Jails are just out there. One way. One way. Yeah. Well, the council said one way. One There's way. no quick way to get there. <laughs> right. 
right. basically you know, what Highway 50, which is you slow down for all these little towns, it takes forever to go anywhere on Highway 50. No, that's not as far from a person to go across. Hopefully, we don't have to do that. Again. Yeah, I, I made the mistake of driving here one day from somewhere in eastern Kansas on Highway 50. It's just torture. Yeah. A lot of IRPs. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, I will certainly look into you know, what this, uh, the Stafford County Jail would potentially cost. And I will well, test my true. ability to see if there's genuine interest from our two neighboring counties to the west. Um, I would guess that Honey County would be interested in know that Edwards will. But I mean, you know, you know these people better. How many did Edwards County have to? Did they drive mm -hmm. theirs around too, or how they? No, they, 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 they have no, they, they they have a, Edwards County has a couple cells in the top floor of the courthouse. And right, and correct. the I don't know how to say this politically correct. They don't have as close to as many prisoners as I. They they don't. I don't know if it's. The prosecutor, whether it's the law enforcement, the judge, whatever, but they don't, they don't have near any case for the case. So I don't think they'd be interested because it's not going to save them anything. But I know Pawnee County. I mean, I visit with him a lot, and they're full most of the time, and, and they've well, got. Pawnee County has crime. Right. Like, I don't believe because I went up there to see what they did with some of our brokers from Maxville because they had to right. prosecute in Pawnee County. And I look at the numbers on the files, I'm like, am I seeing this right? Pawnee County for 2012 had more criminal cases than Ellsworth County and Stafford County put together. And Pawnee County is only about 5,000 pop population. So you have Ellsworth and Stafford together, and that's, you know. But they have a lot of... Lot of they have a lot of crime that takes place out of the state, and they investigate those. That's, that's where a lot of that is. Because the state doesn't investigate themselves, so they have the sheriff do it, which makes no sense. KBI used to, and they don't. Well, the K KBI is not fully funded. They took a, a hit with the budget and DOC is a whole department took a 6% cut, right. which is a chunk of change. The state of Kansas is going to have some financial problems. Already I'm seeing a blatant attempt at raising revenue using the traffic courts. Mm -hmm. They've redesigned the highway patrol tickets. Now you can charge up eight offenses on a ticket. Mm -hmm. And guess what? They're doing that. Got well, but you know, that's, to me, that's not even subtle. I mean, you know, it's like, hello, guys, go out there and you know, raise us up some revenue. Brownback and his cronies have no idea how big the donor pool is that they create. I've seen where they started laying off, for example, attorneys who represent or who, who worked for uh, SRS, Department of Children and Family, DCF is now called. Uh, there's a Called the kid, she was like 30 years old. Um, got a wife and a small child, and uh, lives in uh, Lyons. His last name is Dalkey, and he got laid off. I felt sorry for the guy, but you know, I don't have space in my budget to you know, hire attorneys. Yeah, so I told him, you know, you know, need a recommendation. Use my name. You know, <laughs> They've cut a couple of attorneys. And so that's just, this was the first year of the no income tax, or less than income tax revenue. They have no idea how big a problem they've created, a big shortfall, I should say, in revenue. But already you're starting to see the repercussions. So Edwards County, they put a few in their jail and Courthouse or yeah. Can we do that? Yeah. Kind of like what we used to have. <laughs> I know. Can we do that? I doubt it. I mean, I, 
I always wondered back in those days why they shut that down. Well, they tore it out of it, didn't they? Is it tore The bars were there. Oh, no, it's a law library. Yeah. <laughs> but that was, yeah. Which are books you can't throw That's away. I, well, then, I can tell you, even visiting with Sheriff King over Pawnee County, see, there's his, it's not in the courthouse, it's across the road. But he said, the worst thing is going up the stairs with those prisoners. That is not good. It should be on the ground level. You should just have one floor. And yeah, they got the bullpen cell right. upstairs, don't they? Yeah. Because I think I remember being there, not in custody, visiting, I think, with Cliff Atterbury, for sure. Yeah. You're telling your age now. <laughs> Those jails, that type of jail was built for the third jail <laughs> Works Project Administration <laughs> jails. You can still see what's standing in downtown uh, Lyons, north of the grocery store. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, a lot of counties are, are, are finding their jails are, are obsolete with capital. Oh, the Ellsworth County jails on, so even though it's a one-story, uh, you know, deal where you don't take people up and down the stairs. The problem with that was they did not anticipate, when they designed it, they did not anticipate having a significant number of female prisoners. And it's basically the layout is a, a U-shape, and uh, you're supposed to maintain sight and sound segregation between the sexes and there's you know, no, I mean basically you know, the kitchen is here, the, uh, the Sally pork you know, is here and if you've got one or two females you lose you know, half of your space to achieve the sight and sound segregation mm -hmm. and uh, for years we've been trying to figure out, you know, what it would cost to uh, fill in because they got a stupid courtyard in the middle of the jail, which is supposed to be for exercise of sheriff, smart sheriffs and elsewhere don't let prisoners exercise. So, uh, because you have no way of monitoring. And, you know, you're liable if prisoner A stops on prisoner B. No. Well, I've often wondered, I know some places do this, for like first appearances, and they do a video, so you don't have to go and bring them. They do that in some of the comments. Right. Why can't we do something like that? I mean, it would obviously save some fuel and overtime. It's worth exploring, possibly, or have to have, you know, the judges, the feed, the feed you know, from, you know, how many jails we're dealing mm -hmm. with to the building mm -hmm. here of Skype. I mean, it's worth exploring. That would be a secure phone and FaceTime. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah, I, I mean, I know they do that. Like I said, I think there's other places that they think would do it. It said we'd set up so the press could even, you know, mm -hmm. I won't say participate, but they could be. You know, getting, getting the feed, you know, so it's for public proceedings. Um, I'd say what I'll do is, is next time I kind of head that direction, I'll, I'll, I'll swim by the Ottawa County Courthouse and see what they expend. It's all public. Um, Perhaps. Do. No, no. Or you mean like, I mean, would they be interested? Oh, I doubt it. Well, you got prisoners down in Pratt, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, you got them in Pratt? Yeah. Okay. We keep them barred in Pratt. Yeah. It's in there. They're all listed in there. Mm -hmm. All the have one of them. They have to throw full up. So we right. And they have a good Pratt to Iowa. Iowa. And in the years past, I mean, it doesn't happen very often, but I've had to go to Reno County or Russell County or Ellsworth. I've been several years since I went to Ellsworth, but I have. I mean, it, when you can't find anywhere to go, you just start calling. 
So all three of these facilities are full now? Well, I don't think Kiowa is now. Um, see, I think Kiowa County also houses prisoners from Liberal mm -hmm. and probably other places, but uh, when I talked to them to move those, they said there was plenty of room. So they evidently shipped them out somewhere. I, I met the new Kiowa County attorney the other day. He's a real serious young man. I, don't know who, yeah. I got his car up. Real serious. <laughs> of course, you know, again, I'm, I'm showing my age. What's his live feed, isn't it? So I, I, I better be careful. I'm going to tell you a funny story, but you think it or not? Okay. <laughs> you can tell me later. Yeah. Well, it, 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 Real quick, this is this is basically something you always need to keep in mind when you've been doing something for years and years and years. You will have friends, you will have people who are not friends. When you go into a room to sit at the table, you want to make sure who's all at the table as opposed to seeing an old friend like Glenn Curbs sitting down next to him. That was ill-considered, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Well, it seems like I recall that <clears throat> the rationale for Rice County doing that they they were going to rely on a lot of IMS people. Uh, they 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 built their jail to I guess we'll call federal. federal standards so they could house federal prisoners and they could also ha house uh, immigration and customs enforcement arrestees detainees. Now. You can build a jail that's not up to federal standards and be perfectly okay. Because federal standards, of course, are you know, not expensive. Line, you know. yeah. mm -hmm. But it's just like that. Then the feds say, well, we're not bringing them. Yeah. There you said. <laughs> well, yeah, but well, right. you, don't, you don't detain illegals that long, do you? I mean, day or yeah. two, and that's it, they're gone. They're, they're shipped out. Maybe longer a day or two, but not very long. Yeah. So you're not making any. Right. And I don't think, I mean, Joe would know more than me if I've never had a jail. Of course, I don't think any jail is going to be a money making project. Yeah, you have to be very careful to think of jails as money making. Yeah. In Rice County learned that right. lesson. In Chase County, County did. Learned learn that lesson with their juvenile detention. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's not going to make money. I'm, I'm not wanting to make money. No, I understand it's safe. Save money. I understand. I mean, this, but I just this, want to point yeah, that out. Yeah, it's not going to be a revenue making deal. Just to break even. Yeah. yeah. Well, Man, I, I, just since I've been here, the numbers are I mean, they're atrocious. And you can't manage your department from, from those variables either. You know? So we have our customary 12 or 15. I think we got a baker's dozen in there. <laughs> we got we got one gal that's in Central County. I'm assuming she's got some Central County. She does because we got to go get her. Okay. Yeah. And, and you're probably going to end up. But it is. It's usually a customer. You know, it's like people. Twelve. Well, not or twelve not numbers. Just, yeah, numbers. Yeah. Same, like I mean, that numbers never go down. Some, but yeah. It doesn't go down much. Like it's usually you know consistent number. Yeah. <clears throat> and we actually had a little less crime than we did a few years ago because we got rid of a lot of uh, you know, incorrigibles. They're all in DOC. Mm -hmm. um, one problem that the Ellsworth County is experiencing because I've been there like forever is all these sex offenders I put away like 15, 20 years ago are getting out. And they got the sexual predator law. And what they do when the AG's office chooses to invoke it, where the trial takes place is the county where the last conviction occurred. So Ellsworth County has had a couple of $28,000 trials. Thank you very much. Um, so even though the AG's office chooses to prosecute the sexual predator thing, the county has to pay for defense counsel and all the witnesses. And we had that one guy, his last name 
Harris. I have a three day trial. I swear they subpoenaed every psychiatrist in the state of Kansas. <laughs> also, law enforcement officers I haven't seen for years. And I'm like, what are you here for? I'm here to testify against Harris. Do you actually remember the details of that case? No. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh... But um, yeah, Ellsworth has gotten hit hard. And you here in Stafford County kind of have been hit hard in about 10 years. About three of these people. I'm assuming they still have the sexual predator law on the books. Sexual predator law, they have done filled up the facility over in Larvin. Again, it, it's legislature in Kansas wants to look at people like they're tough on crime, but they don't go, you know, pound the last nail in because they don't build more space. Again, they're trying to push it off on counties. They're doing a good job, though. So on a lighter note, how are we progressing on the tax sale? Well, I sent out the nasty brands, and I'm sorry to say we've gotten very minimal response. It kind of looks like we're going to have to go file against, you know, 50-some properties and, you know, I just said we're going to buy yeah. some. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll get some people who, who pay up after they get you know, formally served. Mm -hmm. But I had good luck in Ellsworth County with the nasty grant. Took in over thirty-six thousand uh, dollars. Here, only a couple found. I mean, yeah. We have signs. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, like I like I say, the, the, the one I could say about signs. Or closing on these oh. properties is a lot of times you, 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 you get them you know, in the hands of a responsible owner and you actually increase the value of neighboring property. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so yeah, I, I can go ahead and do is a tax budget tax right? foreclosure this year. Do you want to do that now? Yes. Sure. Right. I mean, is this the We've last been talking one? about it for the last 15 is this, years. Is this the last one? Anything dramatic? No. Wow. No, it's no. just. Let's do the last two. He should have two. Oh, he should have two budgets. Yeah, in general. Is this? No. Yes, I'm, I'm going to depart unless he has something no, really fascinating. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, explain all this. I do need two reports from the Pity Boyle. Yeah. He's having writer's block again. <laughs> All righty. I'll find out what they are. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gorman and Mr. Watts. Sorry. Right. Right. He's told me all about Mr. Gorman, but the thing is, I need to write. Thanks, Joe. Oh. Thanks. Jeez, oh, we'll see how the roofers are doing. It's like I, time I put new roofs on all my buildings, so I'm going to be like $22,000 poor at the end of the month. Oh, yep. Well, that's like <laughs> all these wonderful hailstorms we get. I decided to do serious um, hail resistant um, shingles in one building and metal on another building. Metal's expensive. <laughs> but uh, metal houses hold up real well. Okay, we'll put it in the sack. No more explanations, huh? I can make it pretty short. Um, as you can see, in 2012, what my actual expenses were, and last year we were all asked to cut where we could cut. So I cut where I thought I could cut, and it's not, it's not gonna, it'll be over. So that's as realistic as I can get, and it's mainly because of the prisoners, which we've been talking about. And there's a $30,000 capital outlay on there for the fingerprint machine that I still haven't got a quote in right. 
that came from the phone. Just talking to him on the phone. It's supposed to be between twenty and thirty thousand. So I, that's why I didn't come last week. I was waiting on the bid, and I still haven't got it. And you know, like I said, I don't know what the fine would be if I don't get it, but I don't want to get the county in trouble. So that's why I put it in. Must be a lot of <laughs> but, uh, I don't know anything about them because I've never been around. The, uh, I was looking right now, I'm on pace. If something doesn't change, I'm going to be over on my prisoner budget about 15000 which isn't as bad as I thought it might be, but we're not even halfway through the year. So. I wish there was another way I could get a crystal ball and read into that how much, but I, I don't care. Your professional services and others, what's that? Okay, that is uh, mainly it's record service. Uh, when we have a record come out, we pay record fee to the record company and then when the people come to get the vehicles we get the money back. So but, but what happens I talked to me about it and I haven't got to talk to anybody about it. But we spend money out of that for the record and we did it for the canine, for vet bills, uh, humane society when we have to have them come down and get vicious dogs, whatever. It all comes out of there. Well when we collect the fee for the impound or the record, it goes into a separate account in the general fund. It doesn't go back into this. And the same with like the impound fees that we charge at impound, they don't go into that. They go into a separate general fund budget. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I I need to talk to the auditors because that doesn't make sense to me. You're spending money out of this. And one off and yeah, and it's just. I'm paying for it, but not getting it. Yeah, I mean it should kind of be even, but and well, well, I said something about the canine. Uh, we had to put the drug dog to sleep last week, so we don't have one anymore. Anything that happens? I'd love to, but obviously not this year with the fingerprint deal and. and you're looking at five to seven thousand dollars when you're done training it, and, and I just I'll wait for. Uh, I've talked to some neighboring counties, and because I, the biggest thing is the service to the schools. But I mean, it is a deterrent. But and I, I do want to keep doing that, and they said they'd come help me for next year, this year. This bill almost looks like prisoner expense isn't going to be high enough. Well, it probably <laughs> isn't, but, but I don't want to. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, if you had a, everything to do with the prisoner in there, it's, that's yeah. expensive. And it's, on a percentage wise, our prisoners are, obviously, they're not all. Stafford County. Right. I would say percentage wise, probably 30% or stuff in County, 30 or 40. And the other 70 is transit. And we get a lot out of Martin County. Actually. Yeah. Tend to just kind of come to the north part of the county. Yeah. Can't just chase them back in the other county and call them. Pepper's I also have, I know Clay knows what it is, it's, it's an agreement with uh, Pleasure Community College. 
is for emergency dispatch services for disasters or whatever, and we have to sign, well, I've already signed mine, but I'll leave this with you guys to look over. So we can get it sent back in. And I do think that the video thing would, I mean, it's not going to cure it, but it'll help. The yeah, workforce yeah. appearance, you know, we have to go get them for their first appearance, all of them. Well, if they can do it on video, that's going to save fuel or overtime, mileage on the vehicle. I could imagine that new jails wouldn't have some type of that. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, but what it would take for us to just develop it, yeah. It should be. Right. I wouldn't right. think so. Either. But I don't need a special rules for you know, any special yeah. receiver. Or nobody else can link it. I don't know if anybody else can get on it. Well, I don't think I don't think they can. You, you, it's public. Yeah. It's public. Right. I mean, if you watch, if you watch, uh, well, yeah, right. Channel 12, when so and so appears in court, right. you know, mm -hmm. the judge is sitting there in front of the CRT and yeah. This public information. Is it, is it the first time of public information, though? No. Like you said, their first, first appearance? Yeah, it's all. Yeah. So, why wouldn't Skype work? I don't, I don't see why they could. But, I mean, that, that would be up to the judge. Yeah, you know, all yeah. The, obviously. Yeah. Visit with them, but I mean, it, would, it would save money. Yeah, because Kyle was the first time he was and it'd be neat to know the exact breakdown of the cost of miles and time. You know, we how long ago was that? We used to have that fuel and expensive yeah. vehicles. I mean, that's that's got to be a lot of money. Yeah. Well, it is. <laughs> I mean, would you assume that it's 30% of your budget? Probably. Probably. Or 40. Well, and it, I and you're pushing 40 by the time you. When it, it works, works out, out which is. cents a mile. For, I mean, that's maintenance and right, depreciation yeah. and all that, but then you have to have a deputy. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you that's, you know, from yeah. here to Greensburg, quarter you, you your bar shot in eight hours. And, and when it works out, which it doesn't work out very often, but sometimes it does, if a lot of times when we have court, they'll have one at 9, one at 1 o'clock, one at 2.30, and one of them's at Pratt, one's at Cowell, and one's at Great Bend. Well, there's only four. Someone's got to be here in case a call comes in. Well, if it's just Pratt and Greensburg and they're not five hours apart, we take the van and just make one loop. But it usually doesn't work that way. You, you can't have an officer sitting up here making overtime just sitting there for five hours. So uh, we have different and it's and the logistics is just mm -hmm. yeah, it just it's crazy. So we need a motion on this. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to me and it was an access agreement with Patch Community College. Second. Okay, it's been moved and second that we go in agreement with Hutchinson Community College. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Just one copy, Jeff. Yeah. Was it Cassie? I mean, Cassie. Yeah. How, how could she not find that on the computer? Well, she, what she told me, she could find the, the address itself. What she was trying to do is Google it. Google it. She could say just put the here. That's what she told me. And I mean, I was on the phone 20 minutes with Cassie, and she yeah. said, it's just not on. It's just not on. Just so I went in the next morning. Well, it was there. Yeah, it's, it's on. I mean, I, 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 I don't. She didn't. She didn't edit the next morning. You know. No, no, no. no.
No, because well, she's she's got got well, well I'm gonna go to her again because she had told me something about Google and I said, Well that's not what he was wanting. No. The phone company I mean the phone company wouldn't put in mom's phone because they had the address from nine one one. Right. And she couldn't get it. I just blew my mind. I will find out what's going on there. Uh, she's been there. Well, she, she dispatched know. it more than she knows. She ought to know. I thought. That's why I think, though, I think she was trying to Google it. I don't, instead of just looking on her screen. Okay. To find out. Well, I heard a male voice in the background. That was it, Phil Kirkman. It's got to be there. Yeah, she's, I said, well, she said, is that new? And I said, she's been there since 1978. It's got to be on there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was kind of scary, too, if you think they couldn't find it if somebody was having a fire. Yeah. No, it's on there. I mean, and she couldn't have programmed it on there because Red Jeans was in there. I guess it would have been That would have been actually, that was probably one that I put in because when it originally started, I was the one that did it. And it was, we had to address everybody in the county and I was taking too much time. I taught Regine how to do it. So it's been in there. Okay, anything else? Yeah, anything else, Jared? Where, Jared?